Hello guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you the third video tutorial about painting this Skeleton Warrior miniature. Today I will focus mostly on painting red clothes and the shield of the miniature. I will most probably also work about uh, on a few more details like, um, like the skull but I'm not sure exactly how it will work with time. So let's now focus just on these red clothes and on the shield. So the first thing that is important about painting red clothes is that if you want to have nice saturated color, you need to create strong contrast. You, if you are going with your color to brighter and brighter colors, then you will have first problems with making good photos of your miniatures because red color is the hardest to make good photos to and to record on a video. That's why today I will focus on painting a bit darker red instead of what you can see on my miniatures. When you want to paint in as crazy saturated red as you can see on my miniatures then you should use a um, color that I'm not sure if it's available in miniature painting brands but you can buy it in artistic shops it's called vermilion I'm using polycolor unfortunately not because they are sponsoring me because they are not this is just the uh, first professional acrylic color that I asked for in uh, in an art shop and it turned out to be to be great. Uh, camera will most probably not be able to present this color correctly. And yeah, it is uh, it is very bright color, but as you can as you can see, it doesn't look that impressive when I presented it this way, and that's because there is not contrast. And you know, so today I will use only basic red from Andrea Red Color Painting Set. This is regular red color, so you can use any any brand. It's just red, regular, normal red. And this is going to be the brightest color that I will use. First, because it's going to be easier to record on a video. And the second, because I think that very saturated red color might not be good choice for a skeleton because they are supposed to be well rather old creatures that are most definitely a bit rotten so saturated red would not work yeah we should actually use a rather pale pinkish red to represent that the that the pigment that was used for creating this material is is old but I'm not sure if I will do it in this way just because I want to make this look really interesting and nice and I'm not sure if this will be the best choice for the miniature so maybe I'll go into less realistic uh, way of working on it so yeah that would be the introduction of course if you are new here then do not hesitate to see the two previous video tutorials that are, I think, pretty pretty useful. They are about painting the sword and the bones. So yeah, now let's let's start working on this skeleton. Okay, so the first thing that is very important in painting is finding comfortable spot. How to sit in a way that won't destroy your back. I think I'm in now in position that is pretty much okay. So I can start working on the miniature. Um, the first thing I will do is of course create that. I will create sketch with white paint. I'm using polycolor just because they are pretty cool. I am not um, saying that you cannot use other brands. Like I said, 100 times before use any brand you want i just found out that these polycolor paints are pretty pretty cool 
especially yellow paints are much better than uh, these that we are using for painting miniatures. Okay. Okay, you could see my head, not good. Okay. So first, the sketch. So I'm marking these places that are supposed to be brighter. Because it's very hard to paint with a bright color over dark material. And it will be much quicker if you will first paint sketch with white paint. Very miniature. I'm, right now I'm trying to follow the reflections that I can actually see on the miniature. Just hold it for a second in a position like, like this and see where the light reflects on the miniature. Because light will always reflect, reflect on, um, on some places and it's easy to just follow them. You can really see. Okay, can you see that? That it happened because I didn't clean the miniature before I started um, to paint it. Oh boy! I'm pretty sure I don't have anything to clean it. Okay, so one thing. It's like I'm always trying to prepare for painting miniature and. For some reason, I always forget about something. I cut this off. Sorry about that. Oh my god, I, I thought I'm prepared. I always forget about something. So when something like this is happening, take brush cleaner from Whistle Newton. I don't know if other brands work too, but this one works. And just try to roll. <coughs> Take a cotton ear pick and roll over the places where, where you could probably touch the miniature because it happens because uh, there is uh, a bit of grease or something else on the miniature. And even though I'm working in with gloves, I tend to touch miniature from time to time and then it there is a bit of problem with with painting just what you saw okay okay now as you will see the paint will behave much different see no problem anymore So yeah, like I said, just paint these places where the light reflects on the miniature. And remember that we need to create contrast, so we also need places that will be very, very dark. Okay, after applying the first layer, I apply the next layer. Of course, it's understandable that if you are uh, painting the whole warband, you might not want to spend this much time on one miniature. Uh, so just keep in mind that this is a video for people who just uh, like to paint for painting itself, rather, I guess. 
I was always very much into painting, just for painting. So the time that I spend on painting miniature is not such a big problem for me because painting is a goal itself. So I think I will uh, stop at two layers of white paint. You can paint more. Uh, try to don't use uh, too dense paint. If you use too dense paint, uh, you will create structure on the surface of the miniature and then it will not look great. Mm, try to also to avoid having uh, black dots like this visible underneath uh, the white base color because it can be visible in the next stages. I will already uh, mark reflections on the belt because well the same rules are applied to belt as well and keep in mind that when we are painting small miniatures in order to make them readable and details well visible we need to create stronger contrast the bigger miniature, the smaller contrast we need. Okay, I would say that this is uh, this, this looks good now. Oh yeah, we have um, leather strap in here as well. So let's mark this um, really quickly. Okay, remember that um, leather straps are supposed to be a bit glossy, so it will look good if you make uh, reflections on them as well. Of course, now we have the uh, the problem with the fact that this is a skeleton, so the letter elements should be um, in the rotting stage, so maybe not this glossy, but once again we need to think about how the miniature will look. If we are going to make everything realistic, it would be less readable. Okay, so now is... Um, very very good question to ask ourselves do we want to make this red more bright and saturated or, or pale this is a pretty tough question actually uh, first let's pour a bit of red on my palette okay and let's paint with it this part and see how the red will look on it because this is part of the cloth that is shaded in, uh, in more shaded area 
so it can look different and there won't be any problem with it. Okay, it looks pretty decent. Let's try with another detail. Okay, it is a bit pinkish. Is this what I was looking for? That's the question. Let's try with another part. Oh, I have some trash. So once again, the question is if I want this to be more realistic or better looking. Okay, I think I will, I will, I will go with this. Uh, the more you dilute, the more water you add to your paint, of course, the, the less covering will be. And you can create other effects. Like here you can see it's almost glaze. <laughs> but not entirely. So let's paint with it. Okay, so you can, you can, for example, paint these white areas with very diluted paint more times and in this way you can create a slow transition between darker and brighter parts well i'm not sure if this what i said is easy to understand i think it's not <laughs> My point is um, that if you will use more diluted paint, then you will have brighter color. By the way, did you know that in the Middle Ages, pink color was reserved rather for noble men and especially for men, and it was considered at not feminine at all. It was um, it was being considered as uh, as color that represents watered down blood or wine. So it was not, so it was a color that nobility have been wearing when they didn't want to wear red. They, they wanted to be more casual. I think it's a bit surprising how, how it changed over the years. Okay, so now with this more diluted paint, but not as, this, as diluted as this one, I will try to create smooth transitions between this red and black. Uh, to do that, I will try to paint uh, small layers uh, with this paint over the edges of the white areas. I'm saying that I will try because I have no idea how it will work out. But I have in my sleeve a few tricks how to fix it if this will not work out. So, but now let's focus on working this way because, well, we all know how to how to make colors brighter in normal way, so let's try something else, for instance. So I'm trying to paint the edges of these areas. And as you can see, I'm trying to have the tip of my brush in these areas that's supposed to be darker, because side of my brush is leaving, um, is leaving paint in much different way than the tip of it. In much blurrier way. Okay, I ruined it. Well, yeah, I, I make mistakes too, like all the time actually. I just fix them later. And if you want to know how much you should water down your paint, 
then the answer is I don't know how to explain to you this. You just need to see if the consistency is um, is comfortable for you. If the it, if it suits you, you know you you take it on brush. You see if working with it is comfortable, and then you add more paint or more water. It's pretty hard to say, especially that every paint has different density, so there's no golden rule for everything. Okay, I think this is um, this technique can work nice on this cloth because it looks paler, but on the other hand, it looks less red. So I'm not sure. If, I don't know. We'll see when this is uh, going to be finished. Very often things uh, on this stage don't look uh, how I would like them to look. So. You can obviously also use my technique and just paint tiny stripes with this highly diluted paint over the edges of the of these areas. I think I will do something like this right now. When I'm painting, I'm not focusing on using some specific technique. I'm just doing things that work well at the moment. I try to make something similar in here. Actually, I try to make the same thing in here. The thing is that uh, because red is not very strong with covering black places, I can now create uh, smooth transitions between shadows and these red areas. Because red on this black will be very pale, so it allows me to create the transitions and shadows.
Okay, now uh, it's time to add darker color. I will use full red from value, but you can also add just add black color to your red paint. It will work too. Okay, I think it's too dark and it looks more brown than red. So let's make it sit a bit with basic red. Okay. Now I'll do the same thing. I just try to make the sides of this bit is more blurry. Now I'm painting tiny stripes with it, but you can also try to make this glazy technique. Mm, you can also try to use this variation about glaze technique that I just used on the details. It's all about what's more comfortable for you. Okay, now I need this part to be much darker because this is a nice place where you can create stronger contrast. So I will make it darker. Yeah, sometimes I just uh, make a movement like this to take a bit of moist from the wet palette. It's usually all I need because too much water from the jar could, uh, could easily dilute the paint too much. But the wet palette is always a bit wet.
Okay, now I will use a bit of black for the final um, shadows. I don't know. Of course, I will dilute it a bit. As you can see, even though I only had water on my on my brush, it's a bit too much water. Okay, focus. Okay, see, this is how the red looks now. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of glaze technique and a bit of my technique. And in the end, it's a bit paler pinkish red. I think it, it should suit this miniature well. This color, I mean. Okay, so let's work on other details. Okay, I think this reflection has to be a bit higher. This reflection, I mean. Okay, so let's pretend that this uh, leather belt is in better condition than it should be. So I will need reflections on it. Uh, let's think where to place them. Obviously here has to be the brightest reflection. And here. But the whole edge is uh, supposed to be bright. Right. Okay. <laughs> so what I need here, I think I will first paint paint this uh, metal element on the belt. And I didn't prepare for it. Somehow I, I didn't no notice it. I will paint it like it's made of steel. So. It won't be very problematic, and later I'll make it rusty. But because it's... Um, oh no, I somehow I thought it's in very shaded part of the miniature, but it's facing the source of light actually, so it's supposed to be brighter. 
Okay, and the very important thing in painting miniatures is that you should always paint um, details that are deeper uh, in the first as first because if you will try to paint them later you will uh, make many details that you painted previously dirty and that would that would suck okay so now neutral gray You can paint it uh, with painting tiny dots. Thanks to this, you will create structure on the surface, and the le and the belt will look like it's older and worn off. See? Now blue gray pale. As you can see, now I'm not painting everything. And now a bit of white for reflection or two, because uh, white is supposed to be rusty, then even rusty material can be scratched here and there, and then rust goes off and it's reflective again. Okay, now let's go to the leather strap. I will use flat brown. It's very basic uh, brown color. Okay, so first I will mix it with white paint. Okay, I think that this color is good enough. And let's paint over the, the reflections that I prepared. Now a bit of uh, white paint with a very small amount of brown. This is too much. Okay, something like this. And a few reflections on the belt. Uh, try to paint stripes. This will also create structure. And make uh, the detail more interesting. Okay, now let's as you can see now I'm painting stripes with pure flat brown.
This way I'm not only creating structure but also transitions, smooth transitions between bright and dark colors in the shaded areas. Okay, now let's make this hole a bit more visible. Remember that painting tiny uh, dots on the top of the and on the surface of the of the hole bed make the make it looks like it's more worn out, worn, worn off. I'm not sure how exactly it is, but you know, used. And old. Okay, so now the same thing on this part of the belt once again tiny stripes Now you can see there is reflection, so it's more visible. And thanks to that, I think it looks better. I'm not sure why there is this black thing going on in here, where it's supposed to be. I think I will try to repaint it a little bit with brighter colors because it's it doesn't work for me. But uh, once again, I need to keep doing it by creating these stripes to continue creating this pattern. Okay, I think it looks better now. A bit more of this brightest reflection. Okay, I think that now this belt looks better. Okay. So we are another little behind us. Uh, now let's quickly make a few glazes with brown paint. 
I just add white water to it. <laughs> white water. Uh, I meant that. Just water with nothing in it. So yeah, now I'm removing most of paint in a piece of paper. And now let's simply paint it with it. As you can see, color changed barely visibly. Barely changed at all. I think I need more reddish color for it. Because, well, after all, rust is, uh, is rather orange than brown. So, what could I use? Do I even have orange paint? I think I don't. Okay. Okay, in this case... No, I found. I found one. Okay. Yeah, I... I didn't use it in ages. Okay, it, it can explode on my palette. Do you? Okay, it doesn't look it doesn't look bad. So let's add a bit of it to, to this brown mixture. Yeah, it became yeah, I can add a bit more. I think that this is okay. Mm. Color looks good for me. Okay, let's continue. I want rust to be only in this part of the sword because I think that the sword looks very nice. So I don't want to really ruin it. I believe there are also um, some ready effects washes that are supposed to be rust. Wait a second, I think I have one. Wait a second. I do! Okay, I bought it some time ago and I forgot about it. I totally forgot about this. Okay, there's something like this. Rust texture and rust wash from from this set. Let's see how this will work. If I remember correctly, I much more preferred texture version. Let's see. It looks just like brown brown diluted paint. Okay, let's see wash, how it looks like. Okay, wash looks more like rust. Now I feel sad with this rust on the sword. It looked so pretty. Okay, so as you can see, color is really good, so maybe this is much better choice for rusty color. I think it's better. I think it's better choice than using just paint. I mean, of course you can use paint. I just think that this color is uh, very good for rust. I mean, you just saw what I was doing and I think we can all agree that this looks a bit better as a color. It's, it's closer to real rust.
As you can see, I'm trying to um, keep this rusty color in the shaded parts of this of this belt part. I do it in order to keep it um, visible, readable, better looking. Okay, I will leave it now for a moment. Yeah, this rust is still barely visible. Okay, and it's glossy, maybe I should try this um, texture after all. That's the problem, it's glossy. It's it, the color is very nice, but because it's glossy, it can ruin the uh, the whole composition. So you need to be careful. But maybe this, the second one, will make it more more matte. I can always use a matte uh, varnish eventually in the end. We see. Okay, I think I will leave rust in this condition. Maybe now it's time to start working on the on the shield. So the first thing I will work make is. Uh, that I will paint structure in here because we can see this part of shield so I will just paint tiny lines that will repre repre represent a structure of wood on the shield and it's already uh, sculpted so you can just follow patterns that are that already exist in here, exist, exist in here. Now I'm focusing just on this part of the shield, not on the, not on this, because I cannot uh, work with my brush in this position. Okay, now let's change the position. <laughs> now fun fact I believe that he couldn't use this shield because he on shield needs a leather strap in here to use it properly so I guess it's a mistake made by the sculptors okay uh, 
black gray. I was just thinking uh, what these details are made of. And yeah, this part is supposed to be made of metal. And this, uh, I guess it's supposed to be made of leather. I guess. Now a few stripes here and there to represent that it's worn off. And create some kind of transition. Neutral gray. Now we can just paint chaotic stripes. Gray pale only in the brightest parts, and once again by painting dots and stripes. Okay, now I need to make similar thing on the rest of the shield you need to keep in mind that black color is very important for creating a nice looking miniature we need to use a lot of shadow Now obviously we need the brightest color to be in here, we need color, the shield to be the brightest in here. Okay, so the reflection goes like this, but we also need a bit of uh, reflection in here. And in here of course. Okay, now neutral gray, and I will do the same thing as that before.
Okay, same, same thing on the top. Uh, painting details like this is very easy because uh, I don't have to work on creating very smooth transitions. It's great when you need to paint a metal that is worn off because you just paint plenty of stripes, you try to be chaotic and it looks good. So yeah, I'm using just the tip of my brush and I'm trying to be chaotic and with the further I go, the more I'm trying to barely scratch the surface of the miniature. Thanks to this, I leave smaller amount of paint. And if I have, no, and then it's simply less visible than, so it becomes, and transition becomes a bit blended, smoother. I can always also go back. Like right now, like look, I take black gray and I paint a few stripes in here, but I also try to barely touch the surface. Now I take pure black paint and I paint a few black stripes in here. See? And now it's now it's nice smooth transition. Okay, I guess it won't be visible on this side. Now blue grey pale obviously. So yeah, I'm still trying to be chaotic. But with each brighter color, I try to focus more in the middle and leave a smaller amount of paint on the sides. No, oh, it's oh, we have focus. I thought it's it's doomed, and we won't have, and you won't see anything. I'm trying to do what I can, but camera has its own ideas about what focus on. Now they're dense like this, then you need to make one side. It's a bit darker in here. I mean, do what I just did. Now neutral gray and let's paint the dent a bit. Blue gray pale. And I didn't make it well, but I will leave it like this, I think. It's good to make a few dots here and there on the edges. This makes, once again, the shield look more like it's uh, worn off. But now it doesn't look very metal. So what I will do is that I will use silver gray 
for the final reflections. Now just a few reflections. Let's start with the top. Okay, I think we need to move this reflection a bit in this direction. I don't want such bright reflections on the bottom because it's supposed to be a bit darker but a few dots here and there will work will make it look uh, more realistic I think Now the edge, the edge should have more reflections. No, I don't want to put any rust on it. Ugh. It's bad. Okay, now let's paint it as leather straps. So first let's highlight it with white paint. By saying it, I mean this detail. I have no idea how I can call it, but I'm sure it would be made of leather. Now a bit of flat brown to fix the shape because I think I was not precise enough. Eh. 
eh, a bit in here, it won't be visible anyway, but why not? Now a few reflections on the belt. Like I said, because it can be scratched. I think it, it worked. Now I really, really don't want to apply rust on this shield. Oh man. Oh, I think I should... Well, it depends on how I hold the miniature. I think that now this is better position, but the sword looks better in this way. Oh, it's, it's the mother of compromise. <sighs> Let's try a bit with this um, dark brown red and add a bit of orange to it and maybe then this won't be as glossy and it will work nice. Let's find out. I really like this mm, steel color. I hate this now. Yeah, I should I should leave it in the way how it was. Yeah, I, I will fix it a little bit. I like this steel color much better than this. This is this sucks. I need to make this reflection further in this direction anyway. So yeah, it, it should be rusty, but I don't like it. And if I don't like it, I won't do it like this. How it looks now. I think it looked better without this brown color. But the bottom looks okay. Yeah, we'll just repaint it back. Maybe it will look more interesting now. I don't know. At least now I know that I didn't like it. So yeah, the, it should be rusty, but I don't like it, so I won't paint it rusty. And you should also think about what you like and what you don't like when you're painting. And while there will be haters, uh, saying that you painted it wrong because it's not rusty or stuff like this. You should just not Just don't think about them You should always consider your your enjoyment of painting as the as your um, Prime focus you should have fun. You should enjoy what you painted if it doesn't make sense what you made it, it doesn't matter because 
you're probably not going to any, I don't know, historical contests of skeleton warriors or stuff like this. So it doesn't matter if you painted it in not realistic way. Just enjoy what you're doing. And don't and don't let haters ruin it for you. Now I I should most definitely paint his head, but I think that this video is already long enough. So so yeah, I will I will stop this video right now. Let's call it done and I will upload the next video simply quicker this time. Uh, so yeah, let's stop here. This is what I painted today. And I will simply in a few days upload a new video, video on which I will paint um, the school of this guy and a few other details so so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video tutorial uh, do not hesitate to support me on patreon i appreciate it and you can find there also uh, many other video tutorials and pdf tutorials as well but yeah so yeah i had to say about this so yeah, thank you very much for watching, uh, subscribe to my channel and see you on the next video tutorial in a few days. Bye!